Hello everyone and welcome to part two of me smelling the new La Galamatière X-rays and today we're going to be smelling Vanille Planifolia and Jasmin Grandiflorum courtesy to Sebastian Furtado who was kind enough to send me these samples. Hmm, which one should I start with? I have to admit I am more curious about the vanilla than the jasmine so let's start with the jasmine just because I want to really be able to concentrate on that vanilla afterwards maybe may I so my thought process is maybe the jasmine would be um slightly less potent smell than the vanilla and would you know um, affect me less maybe I might be wrong so let's try jasmine Okay, and let's do the blotter as well. All right. This is a very fruity type of jasmine, which, huh. It smells like such a common jasmine scent which I, I i'm not going to fault it jasmine is quite common in fragrance um but what else could they have done with it now yes the way it's turning um so the fruity notes are starting to die down maybe just a bit um they were very weird and i did not like them the fruity notes and now it's greener it's fresher jasmine that does remind me just a bit of the drier stages of um joyeuse tuberos which is my most favorite jasmine scent from Guerlain, um which you know tuberose is right there in the title but i think that fragrance excels at being a jasmine more than it does at being a tuberose but as it is I'm really trying my best to remember what this fragrance reminds me of because I, I have no idea as it is. And there's also this ambery, almost like um, pastry, pastry sort of amber that's just beneath the surface that accompanies the scent. At the end of all these, all these videos, I would like to do a recap of all of them to see maybe, because I will wear them and see maybe if something's changed or how they evolve or I will try to give you some details on their performances or whatever. My goodness, what does this remind me of? I don't know. But this is kind of... You know, it's like I'm smelling a jasmine fragrance done in the 1980s, late 1980s. It's like I'm smelling something close to Cabotine, the grass, I don't know. Um, it's very jasmine -y and nothing else. What I don't, that there is still something I do not like about this scent. It doesn't feel, it doesn't smell like natural jasmine, you know. Um, it smells like perfumey jasmine. Jasmine, I think, has to be worked in order to smell um like the natural flower it comes from i might be wrong in this but there aren't many aspects of natural jasmine that are present here i mean i do get some leafiness i do get the sense that i'm smelling a huge white floral scent that's very very plasticky it's dr it's more dry than it is wet. There's that pastry vanilla, which I don't know what's doing there. I mean, in Bergamot Fantastico, there was an ambery base 
but it didn't interfere with the overall scent. Now here, I think it does. And I think it bothers me. I think the vanilla is not doing a terribly good job here. Hmm. And it, it lacks... I think this is what it is that's bothering me. It, it lacks the depth. It lacks the, you know, the 3D quality of jasmine. You know, when you smell a good jasmine fragrance, you know, again, like Joyeuse du Béreuse, you get all the dewy sappiness and the leafiness and the freshness of the jasmine. But there's none here. This is like claustrophobic, honeyed jasmine, which I really, really do not like. I mean, usually jasmine is very evocative for me. This one is not. But I will have to see if anything changes about this one. Let's read something from the Guerlain website about this jasmine. And it doesn't remind me of Jasmine Bonheur because Jasmine Bonheur is fresher. It's more powdery. It's, I have to say, Jasmine Bonheur is more interesting than this one. And Jasmine Bonheur is very, very uninteresting. Um, uh, this is called Extract 30. 30 is from the temperature at which um, Galan chooses the extraction uh, with the CO2. Okay, um, I mean, I should, I should stop reading these because these are not important, I think. Uh, it's just fancy ways of... But it does... Rem <clears throat> I think, yes, I think the way this is done... It slightly reminds me of the amberiness of um, Chalimar Souffle de Parfum, which is, have to say this, sadly, it's a more beautiful Jasmine Sambac rendition there. It smells so sad. It's like I'm smelling, again, a candied type of jasmine, which I don't understand. I mean, this is very oily because they are x-rays. This is very oily and it may have some evolution on the skin. This is why I am testing them on the skin. But if someone handed me this fragrance in a Guerlain boutique, I would be... Um, I would not be interested in smelling it further. And I want to get to the vanilla. Maybe that one's a bit more interesting. I mean, it has to be, you know. It's a vanilla. The house signature. Please let this be interesting. <laughs> and we'll do the... Oh, thank God it's more interesting and at least it's more alluring than the jasmine. Okay. Um, it's very... Okay. It's like I'm smelling the very first seconds of um, Spiritueuse Double Vanille, which is a good reference to have. It's very boozy, fresh, green vanilla. Which, yes, it does go its own way. It's just the first few seconds that is very, very similar to Spiritueuse. Then it does go its own way. And the way it's going is, um, is a very resinous... Oh, I like this. It's a very resinous, camphorous type of vanilla. It's like I'm smelling the resin of a pine tree which is very, very boozy vanillic. At this stage, and, and the most important thing is I'm finally smelling floral vanilla. 
because vanilla is a flower you know the, the well it isn't it is it's a pod <laughs> it's an orchid pod but the uh, the smell it is supposed to be floral and this one is it's it's like finally i'm smelling something natural that comes from an orchid um i did speak about this in a in a uh, past video but i used to grow orchids uh, myself uh, however I am not very terribly experienced with the vanilla orchid because I never grew it that one's a bit more difficult to grow in a household environment but let me tell you the way this one smells it's slightly floral and it is it I think it works now there's something else in the distance there that's very tarry tarry bitter and leathery and very 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 smoky this is very very interesting now if some someone handed me this in a guerlain boutique i would be very much uh, curious to smell further unfortunately with the jasmine grandiflorum oh my goodness i i i feel i feel <laughs> i feel nothing for this one but this one, there's a burnt quality, a tar, a rubber quality to this, which is very perfumey, very interesting. I don't know where it's coming from. I would be lying if I, uh, if I told you I knew where this was coming from. It's sort of like something very burnt, um, like I'm smelling something done by Anik Monardo, um, either Bulgari Black or Patchouli 24 for here on, um, my goodness, not, not here on green. It does remind me of Hyde for here on green for just um, some facets there. T Patchouli uh, 24 from Le Labo. It's just not the entire fragrance, just that thing in the distance, the burnt rubbery smell which is very very beautiful and it's like an anchor and it does this contrast does give the fragrance the the 3d quality it very very need it very much needs it because in the because you've got in the foreground this green floral boozy type of vanilla and it gradually you know it deepens like a resin like a, like i'm watching uh the sun through a piece of amber it's spectacular i like this now it's still very much like natural vanilla you know like smelling you know just like opening a vanilla pot and just smelling smelling it so yeah i think could that be the the natural facet of leather of vanilla? It doesn't feel familiar to me because I thought I'd I I would have recognized that. For some reason this feels very, very faint now. Maybe it's just too overpowering and it's I need to take a break, maybe drink some tea. maybe read something on the Galan website but this is fascinating um extract 21 for 21 days the planifolia requires 21 days of maceration um cold maceration in alcohol to be transformed in a tincture um, this is done by hand this is a traditional technique which gives the precious vanilla its um, gourmand its extraordinary gourmand sillage all right but i have to say this is it's delicious it's it's exactly 
I think this is exactly what I was expecting because it's deep, dark vanilla. And it's funny that I recognize this. Yes, it is. It is the natural leathery facet of the vanilla. It is. I mean, I hope it is. Um, don't want to make a fool of myself, but if somebody else knows best, do let me know. Um, but it does smell like a very syrupy, dark, it's like vanilla amplified to the point that it becomes bitter to the it's like um an overdose to your senses and your senses just pick up the bitterness it's it's very good finally i'm not disappointed by oh there's in the next video i will film iris pallida and uh, rosa cantifolia and you know my expectations will be very high for that iris. I really, really hope that doesn't disappoint me because Tonka Sarapia is beautiful as, as that was. It really did disappoint me um, because it's just, you know, it's just Tonka. Tonka is beautiful, but I didn't, there's no need for that because you had Shalimag Milezin Tonka, which, you know, get that, it's cheaper. Um, it's more interesting than the um, Tonka Sarapia was, or the fact that they discontinued uh, Tonka Imperial, which is such a shame. And Tonka Imperial in itself was far more interesting than Tonka Sarapia um, as a Tonka scent and as a fragrance in general. But this one, oh my god, it's like I'm smelling the leather in Shalimar. It's like just Shalimar without anything else, just the vanilla and the leather. Because the greenness and the boozy qualities from the start, you know, them, they kind of died down a bit. I have to hide my hand, the jasmine hand, because that's awful. And What's the most powerful thing now here is just that tarry leatheriness. It is, my goodness, it's so bitter. It's, it's so gorgeous. Okay, now let's give this a try. No, it's just... Oh, well, it does feel like a richer jasmine than it did before does feel slightly richer but still i think the ambery facets just drown it i was not expecting this and this is not something i'm interested in it's not bad but chalimar souffle de parfum i think it's more interesting than this one now this sort of vanilla, apart from the references, you know, you've got Shalimar, which, yes, it is. Shalimar is more interested, interesting a fragrance than this one. Uh, there's Spiritueuse Double Vanille, which is a more interesting fragrance than this one. I think Vanille, Vanille Planifolia is very, very good. I think, I mean, is it worth the price point? cannot decide that in my opinion i don't think it is until now from everything i've smelled if there's anything i would like to have not to buy but to have you know um in my collection it would be this uh, this is what i'm saying now maybe some things will change after i wear it and I will get back to you in the next video where I film the um, iris and the rose. I will give you um, an update if something else changes. But for now, let's just say that it is a very intriguing, dark vanilla type of scent that I wouldn't mind smelling more. I wouldn't mind exploring more. Now, 
If you've got any other questions regarding the fragrances we've spoken about today, do let me know in the comments. And until next time, remember, fragrance creates memories and may yours be happy.